Good day everyone. This is part 2 of our topic in descriptive analytics. Today we will be discussing nature of data. Here are the subtopics to be discussed. Let us first define data. Data is the plural form of datum. The word data has a Latin origin and literally means what is given. According to MiriamWebster.com, data are factual information such as measurements or statistics used as a basis for reasoning, discussion, and calculation. In information science, Schumann defined data as quantitative facts or fact derived from experimentation, calculation, or direct observation. There are six types of data. Data with reference to time factor. Data with reference to mode of generation. Data with reference to location factors and data with reference to nature of quantitative values. Next is data with reference to terms of expression and data with reference to mode of presentation. Each data has different categories. Let me explain them one by one. The first is data with reference to time factor. It has two categories, time-independent data and time-dependent data. Now, time-independent data, the term refers to data which can be measured repeatedly. Example, data in geosciences and astronomy such as geological structures, rocks, fixed stars, and many more. Second category is time-dependent data. Now, time-dependent data, this can be measured only once. Example, certain geophysical or cosmological phenomena like volcanic eruptions and solar flares. Likewise, data pertaining to rare fossils are time-dependent data. The second is data with reference to location factors. Now, there are two uh, categories, location-independent data and location-dependent data. Location-independent data, these are independent of the location of objects measured. Examples, data on pure physics and chemistry. The second is location-dependent data. These are dependent on the location of objects measured. Data in earth sciences and astronomy normally belonging to the category. Data on rocks are also location-dependent. The next is data with reference to mode of generation. Now, there are three types of data under this category, and these are primary data, derived or reformatted data, theoretical or theoretical predicted data. Let me explain to you one by one. First is primary data. Primary data or data is collected primarily from an experiment or observation designed for the purpose of calculation, such as velocity values derived from length and time measurements. Next is derived or reformatted data. Now, these data are generated by integrating multiple primary sources of information with the help of a theoretical model. Third is theoretical or predicted data. Theoretical uh, equations are used to arrive at these conclusions. In scientific calculations, basic data such as fundamental constants are used. For example, data about solar eclipse 
or predicted using celestial mechani mechanics. The next type of data is data with reference to nature of quantitative values. It has two classes. First is determinable data. Now, determinable data are data on a quantity that can be assumed to take a definite value under a given condition is referred to as determined data. Time-dependent data are normally determined data if the defined condition is understood to include the concept of time. Next is uh, stochastic data. Under a given condition, stochastic data refers to data about a quantity that takes fluctuating values from one sample to the next, from one measurement to the next, in the geosciences, the vast majority of data is stochastic. Next, we have data with reference to terms of expression. It has three classes and uh, categories of data. First is quantitative data. Now, quantitative data, these are numerical representations of quantities represented in terms of well-defined units, converting equality magnitude to a numerical value. The majority of data in physical sciences is quantitative, for example. Second, we have semi-quantitative data. Now, these data are composed of positive or negative responses to questions asked about various characteristics of the items in question. For example, in biology, mechanism classification is based on a collection of yes and no responses to questions about morphological, biochemical, and other characteristics of species. Qualitative data is the third type or third uh, category. Now, quantitative data, the information conveyed in the form of conclusive statements about scientific objects in quant or quality is qualitative. In this sense, qualitative data are nearly identical to existing information. Next is data with reference to mode of presentation. There are three categories as a uh, uh, cate uh, there are three categories under this type of data. First is numerical data. Most quantitative data falls into this category because it is expressed in numerical values. The third is graphical data. Uh, data is represented graphically or as models in this section. In certain instances, graphs are created to aid users in visual interpretation of a large amount of data. This category also includes graphs and maps. Next, we have symbolic data. These are presented in a symbolic format such as in the case of weather data. So, what is the nature of data? There are five natures of data. Nature data, descriptive data, graphic and symbolic data, enumerative data, and descriptive data. First is numeric data. In the sciences, all data is obtained by calculation and expressed as numerical values. The majority of the time, they are numerical in nature. For numerical data, Positive and negative responses are coded as 1 and 0 in semi-quantitative data. Next is descriptive data. Descriptive data are not well known in the sciences. Qualitative data in science, on the other hand, is expressed in terms of conclusive statements about objects. These may be considered descriptive data. The data is descriptive in this case. Third, we have graphic and symbolic data. 
data is presented in two ways, graphical and symbolically. They allow users to grasp information through visual perception. In these instances, the data is graphic in nature. Fourth, we have enumerative data. The majority of data is enumerative in this nature. They are, however, refined using mathematical methods to make them more meaningful. They are referred to as statistical data. This is why various measurement scales are used to rate them. Next is descriptive data. In uh, all qualitative data may be descriptive. This can be expressed in the form of firm statements. Numerical values can be assigned to descriptive phrases, which can be uh, reduced to numerical data if possible. We now go to the four different properties of data. Amenability of use, clarity, accuracy, and essence. First, we have amenability of use. According to the dictionary definition of data, data are facts that are used to make decisions. In other words, data are intended to be used as a foundation for drawing conclusive conclusions. If they are not suitable for use, they are not needed. The application can vary depending, uh, depending on the situation. Despite this, data's usability remains a distinguishing feature. Next, we have clarity. This implies that data must be shown in order to communicate the meaning of the matter. The sense that, uh, that needs to be conveyed would be uh, obscured if there isn't enough clarification. Next is accuracy. True, full, and accurate data are required. As a result, data accuracy is a ne necessary property. Since data serves as a foundation for making decisions, they must be reliable in order to draw relevant conclusions. Next is assets. Huge amounts of data are obtained that cannot be presented in that format and are not required to be presented in that format. They must be compressed and fine-tuned. The substance or der uh, derived qualitative meaning of the matter can be presented using such refined data. In science, data is made up of measurements from experimental experiments, all of which are calculated quantities. As a result, data is still at the heart of the matter. In addition to the four properties mentioned above, which is amenability of use, clarity, accuracy, and essence, there are three more properties visible. Uh, these three are aggregation, compression, and refinement. So aggregation uh, means cumulative or adding up in, uh, in the concept of aggregation. Example, monthly data for exam uh, are added together to create a consolidated annual uh, cumulation. Cumulative percentages are often calculated when data is presented in tabular form on a variable. Okay, the third additional uh, uh, property of data is compression. Okay, to make a large volumes of data more relevant, they are often compressed. It is important to compress data in order to present the nature of the matter. Data that has been compressed is more manageable and can be grasped easily. 
there are variety of methods for compressing data to make it more manageable. So, compressed data can be used in, uh, let's say, graphs and maps. The next is refinement. Okay, data must be processed or refined. They are capable of leading to assumptions or even generalizations when refined. This refinement may then lead to the discovery of new information. The last topic is the scope of data. So there are four scopes of data. Uh, first is utility of data. Okay, data can be extremely useful in the advancement of science. They can or there can be no study, investigation, or experiment without using data that already exists. No research is complete without the generation of new data. Without sufficient data, no decision making mechanism can function and no problem can be solved. The second scope of data is size of data. The size of data is determined by the study or by the study's topic coverage, data components, and data population, which includes records, data banks, and field survey methods, or questionnaires, or interview, observations, etc., etc. The third is, or the third scope is the period of data. Now, any data collect collection for a research project must have a time frame. If the data date is current or cumulative, it should be mentioned clearly. Interpretations and conclusions are drawn primarily by considering the entire text of the subject. And that concludes this lesson. Thanks for watching.